So here, side by side, we have HO2S1 and HO2S2. If it ends in a 2, it's behind the converter. If it ends in a 1, it's upstream of the converter. So we, and this is just an inline engine, we don't have a V bank where we can have bank 1 and bank 2, sensor 1, sensor 2. We just have upstream number 1 and downstream. Now a unique feature of the Altel is that we're looking at digital information, but we can graph that. So if I highlight HO2S1 and HOS2 and go into graphing, Okay, we're graphing two behind the converter, and we want to do one. And then we want to merge those. Okay, you can see here that the oxygen sensor at the top, HO2S1, is dancing above and below stoichiometric. You can see the voltage at the top, down low, and it's going over roughly 500 millivolts, or here, 0.50. So we know we're in closed loop. There's a lot of information by getting used to graphing the oxygen sensors. We can tell that we are in closed loop, that the computer does have control. What does it mean by the flat line on HO2S2? Well, more than likely, this vehicle utilizes a catalyst efficiency test known as or oxygen storage capacity. However, we can still use what's known as index switch ratio as an entry level test. What I'm saying is the computer may use something different than what I'm using right now. But that flat line tells me that the computer or that the catalytic converter is hot, ready to go to work, and is storing oxygen. If the upstream and the downstream looked identical, then we know the converter's efficiency is zero. We're counting the frequency of the rear O2 sensor and dividing it into the upstream. Well, there is no frequency on number two right now, so we know that this converter under what is known as index switch ratio, and this is how every car manufacturer did it in the beginning. But since then, more of them have adopted to what's called oxygen storage capacity. But this index switch ratio test, it, what do I know from this information? I know that I'm closed loop. I know my computer has fuel control. I don't know if it's in spec. We're going to go into that. But I do know it does have fuel control. And I know my converter's hot and it's storing oxygen. So we'll cancel our merging. Go back to our data PIDs. So the next two pieces of information tell me how well is the computer controlling the fuel and doing its job. This is known as short-term and long-term fuel trim. Short-term is the immediate adjustment to the fuel. Perfect is 0.0. .0. As the numbers go positive, the computer is slightly adding fuel. If the numbers go negative, the computer is taking fuel away. The immediate adjustment, short-term fuel trim, as we look at it here, we're perfect, negative, 3, 4, 1, perfect, negative. We're perfect. I mean, ideally, this is absolutely perfect. What spec do I give it? I wouldn't want it to migrate above 7% positive or below negative 7%. That would be to me, interpreting that data PID as a high level indicator that I need to do more research on the strength of my oxygen sensor that is being controlled by that fuel trim. If I get above 7 or below negative 7, I want to know why. And more than likely, that's a high-level indicator that I am on the bridge of a lazy oxygen sensor. The overall adjustment to the fuel, long-term fuel trim, you can see right now it doesn't move as fast. Right now we're at negative 4. The spec I like to give it for domestic vehicles, this is a 
Chevrolet is negative 10 to positive 10. Right, right now we're negative 4. So the computer is slightly by 4% trying to turn the fuel off. I'm okay with that. I like it slightly negative, and I'll explain why in a second. Slightly negative fuel trims is not going to change anything into my power enrichment multiplier. So negative 4. I want to see it. What's the spec? Negative 10 to positive 10. When you start to get into European vehicles, Mercedes, Porsche, Volkswagen, um, you got to tighten those up. You're going to be around 6 7%, almost what we like to see our short-term fuel trim. We want to see our long-term, negative 7 to positive 7. We can't really, on the, on the European imports, allow them to drift out there to 10% positive or 10% negative because they will set a, a lean or a rich trouble code, the PO171, PO174. So I'm okay with the negative 4. Now let me talk about again what I mean about the power enrichment multiplier. As long as this thing is slightly negative, it won't do anything to power enrichment. Let me explain what power enrichment mode is. As long as the vehicle is met a certain RPM and based upon the throttle angle or the pedal position in this case, at a certain pedal position will go into power enrichment, which means we will no longer be utilizing stoichiometric. Most of the time we're about 80% of stoichiometric. We like to see an air-fuel mixture under power of about 12 and a half to 1 air-fuel mixture. So the computer will go into that richer mixture and leave closed loop. So really it should be called open loop power enrichment. It also looks over its shoulder. When I mean look over its shoulder, let's say that that long-term fuel trim was positive 4%. Here's what's going to happen. It's going to look and say, well, my commanded air fuel mixture, whatever the engineer selected for this vehicle, and being that it's turbocharged, it's probably around 12 to 1 it's going to add 4% more fuel. If it was 5, it's going to add 5%. If it was 6, it's going to add 6%. If it was 14, it's going to add 14% more fuel. It is a fail-safe. It figures if I need 5, 6, 7, 14, 20% more fuel in closed loop, I need more fuel at wide open throttle, open loop power enrichment, and it puts that multiplier in there. However, most of the time the factory is plenty rich. And if you go any richer, you lose power. So that's why I say from a performance standpoint, I'm happy with negative four. In fact, if I do a custom performance tune on a vehicle, I want it to leave my dyno, my shop, with the long-term fuel trims ever so slightly negative. Then I know whatever I told that computer to do, with power enrichment, whatever amount of power it made on the dyno, then I know it's going to make that power consecutively and every time that he goes to that power enrichment command from that throttle position or from that pedal position. So a lot of technicians don't understand that once your fuel trims are wrecked positive, you're going to be running rich you're already running rich in closed loop because the numbers tell you so. They're positive. And if they're over 10, you probably have not, you're probably real close if you haven't already set a PO174 trouble code or PO175, depending on what bank it is. So fuel trims, to me, are the most valuable PID and the most amount of information to answer this big question. Computer? Why are you adding or why are you subtracting fuel? And that input to the computer is the oxygen sensor or a wideband air fuel ratio sensor. That information is feeding and the computer's making the adjustment. So we get to see whether or not the computer's happy, meaning it's not happy, it's adding too much fuel, or it's not happy, it's taking fuel away. 
We like to see it within our spec, short term negative 7 to positive 7, and long term negative 10 to positive 10. And you've got to get yourself into a habit that you look at these fuel trims in as many different engine operation modes as possible. You've got to look at it at idle. For example, I'm not even going to tell you the year making model of the vehicle. I'm just going to say, hey man, I got a vehicle, let's just say it's an inline four cylinder like this, at idle my fuel trims are 18 percent long term and nine percent on short term but as soon as I open the throttle and start to cruise a little bit they fall into spec, they drop down below 10. What's my problem? Well why would the computer want to add fuel just at idle and nowhere else. It's a dead giveaway. You better get your smoke machine out or whatever you utilize and find the vacuum leak to the intake manifold source. It's a dead giveaway and you've got there from how? From interpreting and reading the data trim, the fuel trims, that led you into, wow, this is a high level indicator of a vacuum leak. If you're cruising, and every time you come to a pretty, pretty good hill, you see the fuel trims migrating really high, that's a good indicator that you have a fuel delivery problem. If they're off everywhere, idle, part throttle, cruise, no matter your driving condition, maybe you've got a dirty mass airflow sensor or a leak between the mass air and the throttle body. You've got unmetered air getting into the engine that the mass air doesn't know about. So again, the most powerful PID, I believe, as far as fuel delivery, is you better learn and make sure you understand what's going on when the computer is increasing the number, adding fuel, or decreasing the number, subtracting fuel in both short term and long term, at idle, at part throttle, at cruise, and just before you go into wide open throttle, open loop, power enrichment. Where was it? What was the computer doing? Where was it adding the fuel? It's the most important data PIDs that we have as far as fuel delivery.